energy than to use the free energy that's right in front of them. So when, I, when you hear me say things like certain things must fall, there's a reason why I'm saying this. If we allow this system to continue how it's going, there's going to be no planet for nobody to live on. It's the truth. <laughs> so why this is Brooklyn, look. See the clock tower? Why do you seem so angry? <laughs> of course I'm angry. The planet I live on is being destroyed. I ain't got nowhere else to live. They, they have money. They could build rocket ships and go live on the moon. They could live on Mars, but I'm stuck here. <laughs> Yeah, and they're destroying the planet, and I don't have more to say. So they messed the area, they messed the place up, and then went away <laughs> to the most to Mars. And leave us here to die. <laughs> Look, all of those things filled with fuel and stuff like that. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful though. I didn't know that. I so mean, when you yeah. see the water, it's dirty in Jamaica. It's because they're digging oil down there in the Gulf to put in all of these machines. And we got free energy from the sun, wind, and the water. Free energy is there already. So when you see dirty water wash up in Jamaica, it's for this God bless America stuff. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's all connected in this web of life. If this beast keeps consuming the earth, there's going to be no pristine waters or beautiful Jamaica. And yeah, our kids will starve and our grandkids it's will starve. It's very sad though. It's yeah, very sad. Long. So the system has to be overhauled. She the proper pot. You know, that's why I like the leader of the Hare Krishnas because he wasn't trying to train people to be administrators or ksatriyas. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to teach us to be world leaders and all of that. You know what he was trying to do? What? He was trying, he was giving us the information that we need to persuade the intelligent class of man or to persuade the leadership class of man to make the right decisions. Our job is to be advisors and teachers of the world leaders. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So, we're not really out there on every corner trying to proselytize people yeah. because we don't want to attract the masses. The masses need to be led. Yeah. And the masses right now are following politicians. So, could you um, could you ex just make the clarification as to um, the, the purpose again of um, going out there? The, the Hare Krishna thing, the Hare Krishna movement. The purpose of what? You said um, you're not going out there to, to win um, the followers. First, mm -hmm. When you see Hare Krishnas out there singing and dancing, mm -hmm. their first purpose and goal is to please the Lord. Because the Lord likes to be praised by singing and dancing. But not to convert people over? Now, to convert people, Srila Prabhupada specifically said, attract the classes, not the masses. Classes? Not the masses. What does that mean? It means quality over quantity. You can have 10,000 followers. Oh, so, there, so he's, he's back with the classes same thing. He said classes, not the masses. So which quality, class of people? No, I'm not too happy with that. Which class of people are is he trying people to get? People who are quality. What kind of quality are you talking about? People of high-grade intelligence, high-grade spirituality. And how do you determine that? Yeah, spirituality. Well, you, you can determine a person's nature by their activities and their work. It all boils down back to how human civilization divides itself. Intelligent people generally don't like to hang out with lesser intelligent people. <laughs> I see. Let's just keep it 100. Yes, okay? that's true. I don't like to hang out with people who litter. Yeah. I don't like to hang out with people who waste resources. I'm not that kind of person. They're, they're not using their intelligence properly. So in that aspect, I am more intelligent than them because I'm not going to live and destroy Mother Earth. I'm more intelligent than the person who does that. So why would I want to hang around people like that? That's not my vibration. Hi, people who don't know that you shouldn't litter in a neighborhood and piss on the elevator. I'm not from that class of people. I agree with you. Okay? So I'm, I'm more... In certain aspects, I'm more of a quality person. So your leader is saying that we should have... Uh, people who are concerned about the environment and spirituality and all that. In, the real measure of intelligence is actually who is striving for a spiritual connection to the Supreme Lord. 
that is a truly intelligent person. Intelligence begins with your relationship with God. And that, that's you it. Get it, your has, intelligence from God. So it has nothing to do with degrees and schooling and all of that. It's just a way of life. Degrees and schooling have their place because if you're going to have an organization or if you're going to run any kind of system, you need organization and expertise. So again, you have an intelligent class of people, an educated class of people. You have an administrative body or leaders, rulership. You have people who produce clothing and build houses and food and agriculture and protect the cows and stuff like that. So we can have food to feed civilization. Then you have common working class people. But isn't that going is not going back to the caste system that I, again that we again, still revert? I, I mean seriously. Let me ask you a question. What kind of man do you have currently leading America? Would you consider him a high class person? Absolutely not. That man is no better than the stool that comes out of a toad, out of a frog. Oh Lord. The man leading this country is no better than somebody who's drinking alcohol laying on the corner. Matter of fact, somebody drinking alcohol and laying on the corner might have a better vocabulary than that that's running so again that man has a lot of quantity but according to his um according to the caste system mm -hmm. wouldn't he be wouldn't he be in the merchant class uh wouldn't he, the caste is, 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 he would be above a whole lot of he, people he's, he would be a merchant mm -hmm. he's a businessman he's actually supposed to be now the merchant class his main duty is to protect the cow because when you protect the cow, the cow gives you fertilizer and you can grow food. Food production begins with food. Yeah, but that's why he's getting the the, uh, <laughs> the, um, mm -hmm. the Mexicans and all those um, Hispanics away because he's trying to protect his country. See? Maybe he's trying to protect having to um, to feed them and to, to, well, um, to take care of them. When, when you chase the way, all of those migrant workers. Mm -hmm. Now, so many tons of food are rotting away on America's farms from coast to coast, and the price of food is going up. So again, whatever this being is called Donald Trump that's running the country, he does not belong to the intelligent class of men. He is okay. not a Brahmin. Okay. He is not an administrator. He will tell you, I'm not a career politician. But we already know he's not a, you know, and another thing about the administrative class, the administrative class should not declare war unless they are willing to fight in the war themselves and die for their country. You must lead your troops into battle. You see, if all of these politicians... Isn't that an old way of doing things? Huh? Isn't that an old way of doing things? Well, the old way of doing things is way more intelligent than we're doing things. Unless you believe that it's more intelligent for a man to send your son Shalom to war while he's sleeping in his bed with his women and his underage girlfriends. But Shalom got to go to war. Yeah. So yeah, if that's the case, then I prefer the old way of doing things. And how people are doing things now is not intelligent. And we think we're more advanced because we could build up steel and glass to 5,000 feet in the sky. My name is Donald Trump. I'm a businessman. I could build this big building. And I'm not even intelligent enough to protect the environment. Something's wrong with that. So we know he's not. The intelligent class, the thinking class of man, he's not that class. He's not administrative, and I'm going to prove it. Again, a real administrator should be able to go into battle with their troops. This man ran from war. <laughs> is it true? Sorry. Sorry. Yes, is it, it true? is. So we know he's not from the top class of man. He's not from the second class. Is he from the mercantile class? Yes. He's from the mercantile class, but the mercantile class of today's world don't even know what their purpose is. These businessmen are building up these big skyscrapers. They don't care about the land that they took the skyscraper from. They don't care about the animals that had to die, the forest, the natural environment to build the skyscraper to get the materials. That billion dollar building right there. How many, how many squirrels had to die? How many raccoons had to die when they cut down those trees? So these, these mercantile class of men don't even understand their purpose. So that leaves one place for Trump. Trump is a common man. Trump is a common man who inherited money from his criminal father. It's a fact. His father was a pimp. His father got kicked out of so many countries in Europe. They sent him to America. That I didn't know. Yeah. He comes from a low class of people. So if, if you're going to ask me about class, I do 
so what is the leader of, but, uh, what is the leader of the um, the the, uh, the higher Christian movement how does he um, instruct us to to determine um, class and where we are and our function it's not what he said it's what Krishna said Krishna clearly said and I'm going to keep repeating it to you that that Bhagavad Gita is actually the sound vibration spoken by Krishna 5,000 years ago at a specific location for a specific reason in which he covers certain topics. And in that Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says how you determine a person's stratification is by their work and by their nature. Is that what I showed you the, um, in the document, the, the historical document I showed you? Yeah, that, many people, that, many, that many people misinterpret too. Um, that what? That many people misinterpret? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Krishna clearly said how to determine where a person should be in life is by their work and by their nature. I gave you examples of the nature of the person who's running this country. He's not really a mercantile man because a mercantile man, to produce his business, he has to know that there has to be a balance between nature and civilization. To build a road, you're going to have to destroy nature. But you don't have to clear cut the whole forest to build one road. To cut down the whole forest to print money, that's not intelligent. So what the world is lacking is God consciousness in this civilization. This is a godless civilization. And they have built up these buildings and it looks... Beautiful. But that's not the foundation of this. With, you know, with all fairness to America, I don't think that is the foundation of this country. That is not how we started. Well, it's funny you should say that. This country was built by Freemasons, right? Well, in case you don't know, this country was founded pretty much by people who belong to secret Okay, society. but in order to be a Freemason, you have to be you have to be a part of some um, uh, religious group. In fact, if not a religious group, you have to proclaim that you believe in God or a higher force. Mm -hmm. So the Freemasons who built in this built this country had God with them, no matter how they looked. They had God in their mind. They believed in God. Whether their God was Satan or God himself, they believed in a higher force. So in other words, you can't really build a civilization without God consciousness. Any civilization without God consciousness, you know what that really is? It is just well-dressed dogs and cats. You see, human beings go to the hotel to have sex. Dogs and cats have sex in the street. But if the sex is just a sexual act, there's not a real difference. We just do it in a more polished manner. We do it more refined. We're still having sex like dogs and cats, but we just go inside of an apartment building or something. This human civilization is dogs and cats society. It's not a real society. It has no intelligent head. That's why Srila Prabhupada came over here. He said, India is like a handicapped man who can't walk. But the handicapped man happens to be an old man who's wise. And America happens to be a big behemoth of a giant, strong muscular giant with a very small brain. So how you're supposed to do it is you take the crippled man who can't walk but he's old and wise and put him on the shoulders of the ignorant strong man. So how do we how how did we how did we obtain this economic strength? By enslaving other human beings. Um, America has a head start over other countries because they took human. Uh, well, Europeans did that. Huh? Europeans did that. The in, um, there, there was, there, there was um... people were enslaved in America for mm -hmm. a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. and because those people were enslaved, America got an upper hand over other countries. So, what did, but, but, but the Europeans went out into the other countries. Did they take the strongest people in the world? Like. In other words, more slaves are in America than anywhere else. Plus, people that look like me, people that look like you are enslaved in this country. The strongest people in the world are here in this country. No, 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 no. this is where I'm getting at. You had um, the English, they were in the Caribbean islands. They were all over there. They were all, I mean, the British were um, in, in the Caribbean islands. They were also in America. They were controlled in America. They, you know, they colonized America. Um, different parts of the world. Yeah, that's what I'm talking inside. about. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm not too clear. We need to make a distinction. You said, how did America get so strong? Mm -hmm. They just start by enslaving. I'm saying. Slavery. 
everybody knows this country is built by the strongest, smartest people. No, but then we're going back to the mind and we're saying that the Americans, um, we have, it's like a big, strong, um, you're trying to symbolize him to a very big, strong yes, man. America is a big, strong country. America is a big, strong country. America does not have sufficient intelligence to administer the affairs of the world. But then the question I was asking you, how did we get so economically strong? And then you're saying that slavery. it's because of slavery. Yes, yeah, so how it happened is there was something in America called an industrial revolution. And then I'm going to go back to say that they had, they had other European nations who mm -hmm. had slavery. Yeah, they had and slavery. And they did not. They, did they not didn't have as it. many of us over there. They did not. Like, look at us. There's so many millions of people came to America on slave ships. So they say, you know what I'm saying? Whether that was really 100% true or not, they used black people, God's chosen people according to the Bible, the children of Israel who were chased out of Jerusalem, the tribe separated from Jerusalem, the kingdom of Judah went south into Africa. Everybody knows this. The people in the East know this. The people in America, we don't learn that in our history books. Again, God is not allowed in our schools. God has no place, there's no kind of spiritual department that tells you about the soul, or you might get to study religious history again, but that's, you know, that's in a limited framework of a historian. But God is not really, the angle, the connection to God and these people and how this country was built is not taught in school. At least in Europe, if you go to school in Europe, they'll tell you those black Americans are the tribe of Judah. This isn't a story about very well before. Next stop is going to be Long Island City. Europe had slaves, but they didn't have as many of us over there. The slavery system was intense in America. This country was built up off of the slavery system. By the time we were doing enslaving people in America, you know what I'm saying? Europe imperialized other countries. It might not be on their soil, but they went into the other into other so countries. They spread their resources out around the world. Where America concentrated on getting all the land from sea to sign and sea. From the east coast to the west coast, America built an empire. Okay, so you're saying that that is what, okay. They concentrated their resources I tend to agree with that, yeah, yeah. Whereas other countries yeah. were spreading out. Yeah, you're right. Great Britain mm -hmm. spread out to India. It's and powerful, India. yeah. That's powerful. America concentrated their resources. They concentrated the slavery system on the people here. We invented the steam engine. Um, the cotton the cotton gin, the cotton mill, because the work was too hard for us. So we actually invented the steam engine that caused the Civil War. Because after the steam engine came the Industrial Revolution. Cities in the north started to become mechanical and industrialized, mm -hmm. all the things that slaves invented. If they would have never enslaved people, I'm not saying these things wouldn't be invented, but these things were invented out of our suffering. And as a result now, that which is born in suffering is going to get suffering. So now look at the environment. All, the, all of the technology you see is coming back from that slavery. You know, um, you know, th th this might seem, you know, each time I think about slavery and I think about the divine purpose of God, mm -hmm. you know, with man mm -hmm. and, with, and with our race, with our group of people, with many, with many native people, and in, in trying to understand why this thing happened, this, this um, the atrocity of slavery, I'm wondering, I am wondering, and I really do not want to take the, the conversation at the lower level, but I'm wondering if this is a part of some divine purpose. We were cursed because we didn't listen to God. I mean, you know, if you actually look, if you look in the book of Deuteronomy, it tells you all of the stuff that we was going to be carried to a foreign land. The book of Genesis tells you we'd be here for 400 years. And then after that 400 years is up, God would punish that name. No, so so my question is, so we were cursed because we didn't listen to God, all right? But we turned on So God. my question is, can you enlighten us as to what's going to happen to your race or what they did to us? Yes, again, everything is there. Book of Genesis, chapter 15. Verse 13 through 16 clearly says, Abraham, your descendants shall be strangers in a land that is not theirs for 400 years and shall be harshly afflicted. What the Jews are claiming is the I don't care what the Jews claim. Everybody knows that they come from Russia. 
the Khazars that are controlling Israel today are not the children of Israel. So I don't have no time to even rate the synagogues of Satan. So we are the ones, we are the Absolutely, ones. Absolutely, unequivocally, without so, um, But doubt. then I think I, 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 I heard you say something that this is the fourth year of year of Jubilee. This is the year that we're going to be liberated. I, I think I heard you saying that this is the year of Jubilee. This is the fourth year. I can't say that it's the year of Jubilee because a Jubilee is actually a 50 year period that actually falls upon the Hebrew calendar. Mm -hmm. But I do know that this is the 400 year that we've been And what does that mean? Well, according to Genesis, I'm going to, I'm going to say the whole verse for you. If you let me get through it. Because Krishna tells us in advance what's going to happen. He said, for 400 years, you're going to serve a nation of strangers in a land that is not yours. You will be harshly afflicted and treated very bad there. After the 400 years is up, I shall judge that nation which you serve. And then you shall go back to your fathers in old age, in peace, with great sustenance. That is what the Lord said. Now, it's clear as day what he said. And then if you book, jump to the book of Deuteronomy, it tells you how it all began and how we will be getting in slave ships and coming over here to this land, crossing the sea. If we were coming from Israel and Jerusalem into Egypt, it's an overland route. You could take a sea route, but it's just like how we just did on the ferry. You got mm. on the far route right away and you just stayed along the coast. Mm. That's how you can get from Egypt get to the land of Canada and Israel. But that's not what the humanity describes. It said we will go across the sea in ships and serve for 400 years for whatever our forefathers did. So when Jerusalem got invaded by the Romans and ransacked, Apparently the nation spread out. All of the real Hebrews spread out. Most of them went down into the land of Ham or Africa. Mm. So that's why you got so many African Hebrews to this day. And then some of us found up. Okay. I heard it, I heard you're suffering down there in Israel. Well, is it, is I'm not even I'm, no, well, I'm talking about geographically, Israel is totally thousands of miles away mm -hmm. from the land of Ham. The Ethiopians them too. Well, the Ethiopians who go see, this is the problem. When you allow other people to believe that they are who you really are, these. So it's a switch. They're, they've actually stolen our identity, our birthright. Our identity, and now we're going to them, acting like that they they're the God's children, and they're not God's children. They're not God's chosen, rather. So those those people, they're not going to have no power. Those Ethiopians are not going to have no power to our 400 years or so and we go home in mass. But didn't I hear you say that this is, this is, it, this is the 400th year? This is the 400th year. So we're, going back, so we're going back now? Is that what you're saying? You're going to see America's judgment. This is why I can't I always say like, when you hear me talk like um, I don't want this system to survive. Remember, I've been raised as a Bible student on the Jehovah Witness. So we get to learn the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Revelations tells you what's going to happen. It shows you the punishment that's coming to this country. It shows you the punishment. It's inevitable. So America is already going through the early stages of her death. Her death really started in 9 So what do we do? What, so people in America, what, what should we do? Mm -hmm. How should we put people? Well, the, the scriptures tell us what to do. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 12th Canto, it tells you about the characteristics of this time. But we're going over the Roosevelt Island now. In the Bible it says, when you see the abomination of desolations arrive in a place where it ought not to be, all of you people who are in Judea, Judea is code word for the cities, says abandon the cities and head for the mountains, head for the hills. And then the Bible says, I look off to the mountain from which my salvation cometh. The mountain, we got to head for the hills, grow our own food. We can't be killing cows. If we kill cows, we're going to have to buy fertilizer. If we buy fertilizer, the nitrogen is going to go in the sea, and Jamaica is not going to have pretty water no more. Oh, no. So again, it all starts with, if you are even a mercantile class of man, you have to protect the agriculture, the land, and the, it starts with the cow. Anybody who has a cow is going to have arable land because cow has the most fertile dung. And inside the dung is... What do you call it? Eggs. The eggs of the dung beetle. Dung beetle naturally aerates the soil. So a cow.
how it's beneficial so long as it's alive. Donald Trump can build buildings, but in the middle of the night, if he eats a steak, the dead cow is a sin. Even the Bible says to kill a cow, to kill an ox, is to kill a man. There's certain inalienable facts that we cannot escape. And if we so is it worse to kill a cow than it is to kill a cow? Um, it's just as bad to kill a cow as it is to kill, to a, kill a chicken? To kill a man. Really? It's as bad to kill a cow as it is to kill a man. And that's why I'm against the slaughterhouse industry. And most people, if you had to kill your own animal, you ain't gonna eat no animal. Because most people is not gonna string up a goat and cut it. I seen the goat get gutted at my uncle's nine night. You know what I'm saying? I seen when they gutted the goat when my uncle died in Jamaica. And you weren't, you weren't, you weren't eating the goat? I was eating the death. I was eating the death. So we need a drastic overall. We need intelligent leadership. And this is what Sri Lanka came to offer to the West. So when you look at the Hare Krishna people as a simple people, actually they have the spiritual science that could actually change the world. They are the highest qualified on a spiritual level to teach these principles and enact these principles. But if we keep following these politicians, we're all gonna die on this planet. So I am against this system wholeheartedly. They don't have any real spiritual knowledge or principles. They cannot save us. They will keep building buildings, and cutting down forests and printing money until the last fish is gone and the last drop of water is done. They're gonna build schools and nuts and bolt civilization. Then when all of the land and the nature is gone, they're gonna try to eat the schools and the bolts and the nuts and realize they can't eat. You can't eat schools and bolts, you can't eat dollar bills. So at what point do we turn to intelligence? Intelligence solutions. All right.